Yes, it is that time again. Kings Indian speedrun, guys, continuing on from 1500 all the way up to 1600 in today's episode. Hope you guys will learn a thing or two. Here we go. E4. You would go to a fast food chain called Lil Crumb. Honestly, uh, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad idea, eh? Oh, are we playing someone from Albania here? Let's go G3. I'm trying to get this. Oh, he's uh, wise to it. He's wise to it. Well, guys, we're getting the position we want here. <laughs> G5. Ain't it the case? We see G5 a lot, don't we? Like... In general, it's a it's a pretty standard move, I would say. So, <laughs> how are we gonna handle this one? Um, H6, G5, so if G4, I think we, you know, if we take like this, then that's kind of what our opponent wants. What we want is we wanna play Knight H4. Like if I could anchor my Knight on the H4 square, then I would be pretty satisfied. The other thing they teach you, of course, is that if you see someone attacking on the side of the board, that you react in the middle. It's not the easiest to react in the middle at the moment. You know, D4 is impossible. So C3, D4, I would definitely uh, advocate. But um, in terms of moves over here, no, none of those look good. So C3, D4, and maybe even push these pawns. Because it looks like he's castling this way, right? C3 is a very flexible move, especially when this move pretty much tells me, yeah, his king is going over here. Butner says, I love that you guys don't blast us with ads. Butner, I've just been forgetting to do it this whole time. I'm gonna run an ad right now. Here we go. Okay, let's go a knight g1. Yeah, thanks for the reminder, bud. This is the structure I want. I don't want, you know, to have to take at some point. So my knight here is probably not, um, you know, the best place piece. But if I start using this H file, I think things could uh, really turn around for me here. This is the exact same thing as I did in the last game, if you remember. I was saying, oftentimes, you can start using the uh, the H file just as much as uh, as your opponents do. So I'm gonna bring the rook over there, even get him with knight f3 in. See if we can start using that as well. Also, isn't he allowing some uh, maybe some queen trades here, some favorable stuff? I'm looking at this move, and I'm also looking at just captures. I'll start by doing this. No, he doesn't. I know he doesn't want to trade uh, queens. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm surprised to see that. I'm happy. Hey, if he's happy doing it and I'm happy seeing it, then perfect, right? Some relationships exist like that in real life, and there's there's nothing wrong with that, right? If you're happy doing something, and I'm happy watching it, let's just say there's a relationship for that. Okay, knight g5. Time for knight g5. Bishop d2, maybe get this rook over. Knight f7, no, you can't be blundering that one. That's, I didn't deserve this tactic. This was, uh, this was out of nowhere. I didn't deserve for things to work out that well. Take. More trades. Mm. 
More trades. So this was a little uh, unfortunate for Black. He played a pretty uh, aggressive game, but I don't think he should have traded Queens the way he did. I just want to trade pieces, speaking of trading. No, for sure if we play this, he takes this pawn, right? He must. He's born to blunder. Rookie one is the good move. But the, oh no, if he's playing that, he knows what he's doing. No, no, this guy's a serious player. That was a that was a b6, he wants to play c5, so he can take this bishop, or this pawn rather. Impressive. Okay, let's uh, push our pawns up here. C6 loses the bishop. Oh, you see, he blunders, but he sees the blunder. You know, we've we've seen a few of those, a few examples of that today. Blunders, but sees the blunder, and then blunders again. <laughs> Wait, what? What the heck is going on here? He blundered, but then he saw he blundered, but then he forgot he saw he blundered, so he blundered. I don't know if that I should be impressed by that or disturbed. Okay, let's go here and uh, try to get a checkmate. You know? Check. Right, so we've got the king cut off this way. Now we need to bring down here and down here. Oh, he sees what I'm up to. That's okay. Yep, it's okay. I'm up to something too, bud. <laughs> he shall be checkmated. I will find a way. Check. <laughs> does he know that's check? Oh, it does. Uh, let's go here. <laughs> this is uh, very entertaining. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, get this mate, though. Oh. Rook here. I'm really married to this idea. <laughs> we got the mate. We got the mate. Okay, we'll take that. We'll take that. I was very surprised he decided to go, uh, down the board, but I thought he would go up the board. Still, we would find a way to get that to rook me. We were committed to it. it worked in the end. Exactly. So take it. Doesn't matter how you got there. So how you finish. That was yeah. That was very odd. He blundered, but then he, he definitely saw the the trick with rookie six, or maybe he just mouse slipped. I could just be reading into it too much. Let's see. What do the black pieces bring in the 1500 category? Remember I talked about what happens when people just send all their pawns at you? My instinct is to immediately challenge the center. Like, take that. Take that stuff. See if you can't make some threats. Okay. So if I go here, he's definitely going to be taking. My question is, what if I go here? How's he going to handle that one? He almost has to go... Well, he almost has to play bishop takes c6 anyway, which is not a good sign. So if he takes, I'll be happy to take back just with my pawn and maybe put my bishop on that square. So he can't even castle. I feel like that that should be generally a bit frustrating, 
for him, but I could be wrong. Okay, so you can't castle. Aren't you bothered there, bud? Doesn't this bother you, lad? I feel like he's unfazed. This is just uh, par for the course for him. Even queen c4 is an idea. Which one do we want to do? Remember, this knight just develops like h6 to f5. And it's actually a pretty nice square, so. Let's go here, all by this. <laughs> okay, and this move doesn't look overly threatening. Here, just drop back. Here, I'm not sure there are any threats actually with the knight. Let's just keep bringing my pieces in. All right. Queen d5. I mean, both squares look uh, look pretty nice to be honest. I'm gonna go here because it attacks a pawn. No, we don't want to play e6 here. It makes a ton of weaknesses on the dark squares, which I'm not too interested in. And it's also just not necessary. I don't need any pieces developing here. So what, what does the move e6 do, right? It's much better if to get castle as quickly as possible. I'd rather play something like f6. That's what I'd like to do. Okay, that's a free pawn though. That's a free pawn, and we take those. This guy, by the way, keeping the, the king in the middle, he might not be admitting it, but I promise you that it is disturbing him. <laughs> He's not ready to admit it yet, but it's very bothersome. So I could take here, but bishop there, there would be like, let's just say a bunch of trades, because I would have to play queen takes e2. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to give him a check. And if he plays here, I'm going to go back to the center and hit his rook. And if he castles, he's going to drop the knight. So now he has to move the rook. So now his king is definitely not castling. And I know he's very upset about that. Right, everything's all tied up here. This move looks good. Rook d8. I know castling is important, but... I like this move. Make it so that he can't move the bishop, he can't move the knight. You know, I'm, I'm trying to tie him up in a knot here. Oh, that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. So, I know there's levels to this stuff, but pay attention. This happens a lot. People just chuck their pawns down your throat, and let's say you're a guy who plays King's Indian, you can no longer put your knight on f6. Start to panic a little bit. Might handle this poorly. Might play d5, e6, all these moves that don't belong in the position. Just, first of all, we'll wipe as many pawns off the board as you can, and then just treat that as a weakness. Focus on it. Bishop b here, queen d5 is just, I mean, it's just tactics at this point. White has chucked their F, C pawn, E, D pawn up the board in, well, in favor of playing maybe Knight F3 and castles. Like, there's a lot of ways White could be fully developed here, but instead they've played like five or six pawn moves. You have to try to punish those. Yeah, over in Toronto now, buddy. Right, and then once you do that, you just treat this as the weakness. Knight here, Knight here. If knight f3, then bishop g4, pin the knight. Your bishop can't attack that pawn, but it can attack the knight, which defends that pawn. With knight coming here, bishop taking the knight, this guy castling. It seems like uh, black has too much going on. But so far, people who have just uh, thrown the pawns down the board have not usually had a good time. Okay. 
So we've seen this uh, opening before. I think previously I tried knight g4, but also very normal, bishop g4. I've talked about this idea of just giving the bishop up, playing knight c6, and going after the center here. The move e5, play on the dark squares. Try that out. Because a lot of the time when you play e5, you really throw your opponent off. Number one, if they take you, they see knight takes, they lose their bishop. You know, that doesn't necessarily compute as something they want to do. So a lot of times people will play this move against you. And the move d5 is uh, not necessarily a move that you want to play as white, I'll say. So I'm gonna start like this. Again, if I get the dark square bishop, I'd be pretty happy in general. And we're gonna move this bishop, or this knight rather, so we can actually use some squares. Knight here, knight here, bishop covers the pawn. So I know it's opposite bishops, but us playing this opening, King's Indian, as long as you have this and there's no counterpart, you're usually having a pretty good time. Rook b8, we have an open file there. Knight e5, still available. Okay, but he's doing some, he's doing some funny stuff now because he's almost losing that bishop immediately. He's not dropping it right away, but after queen here, you know, what about rook here? All of a sudden the, uh, the pieces start to coordinate pretty well. And if I play a5, I can almost even uh, get rook b4 in there. He would have to play some pretty accurate moves in order to stay in the game. I'm thinking a5 is a uh, pretty good move here, threatening rook b4 to, uh, to fork those guys. And... Otherwise, I'm playing rook takes b2 as an idea. But my opponent still has, you know, knight takes d4, for example. Not clear. c5 as well threatens the same thing, right? Threatens rook b4. But the reason I don't like c5 is I don't like giving that bishop an available square. So I prefer to do something like this and then go rook b4. It's not the easiest to get out of. It's definitely got some moves, but you know, this one doesn't look too impressive. And I was thinking that this didn't look too impressive either. It's playable, but boy, that don't look right. And it don't look right because the queen sits on a3. That can't be good. Just can't be good. Well, let me tell you, something's wrong with this picture. Something. We play queen here. The e pawn will hang in, in those lines as well, so. That's always gonna be nice. C5 still, like, always gonna be a decent move. Um. I'd love to trap the queen somehow, but it's not the easiest thing to do. Let's have a look-see here. Oh, uh, I'm definitely looking at some, I'm trying to set up something real, real nasty for the guy. He's got me really thinking about, you know, how can I trap the queen?
That's all I'm interested in. Rookie eight, eighty-seven. These are all these are all good moves. I like them. I like them. You guys are not wrong. Trust me. But it just doesn't lead to that pretty queen trap that we all want. So we'll give it our best try. But yeah, none, none of these things are really like fully trap the, the queen, unfortunately. So, wow. It's quite possible he played the worst move ever. <laughs> like, he gave no thought. My guy, I just spent like three minutes on this move. Three minutes. And you spent three seconds playing the losing move. Like, at least give me some credit. I spent three minutes. I came up with a banger move. You play the worst move against it. If someone spends three minutes on a move, the bare minimum respect you should be able to show them is like, okay, I'll spend 30 seconds on the reply. You know? Like, there's gotta be some level of... It's just too much. It's too much. Bring the knight back. Bring the knight back. H5. Now that move was made pretty quickly. But there's a there's an issue with the lack of respect from my opponent. H5 and just no respect. He just takes it immediately. Ugh, he must have blundered. Ugh. Ugh. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. Crispy. You're not gonna find it. He's good, man. Crispy. There's a there's a respect issue between us, Crispy. Is he gonna hang his rook? Crispy, don't do it. Crispy. Don't do it. Don't do it, Crispy. Tread carefully, bud. No! Oh! Crispy. It just, you have two and a half minutes. Just bare minimum respect for my moves, please. I need something from you here, Crispy. Something so that I know you care, you know? Bishop to e5, and let's deliver that me. Check. Check. That's check. Did you know that? That's check. I checked you, sir. I answered your check with a check. Check. That's the unexpected one, you know? Check, check. They never see that one coming. But really, I mean, it has to be said. If, if your opponent spends from three minutes down to one minute, you know, <laughs> come on. At least spend more than four seconds on them. Just at least. This game was, uh, you know, pretty good example. Nothing special, but this is one of my, I think it's the easiest plan to execute. You're playing the King's Indian is black. Someone goes for one of the most basic setups in chess. Here it is, you're staring at it. He's got all pieces on decent squares and he's about to castle. Now from your perspective, you give away your light squared bishop, which does not ever control the dark square, for a knight, which controls two in the center. And his queen is also pulled away because it's gonna recapture. And then you go e5 and you get a position where, you know, oftentimes they'll be tempted to give away their dark squared bishop. And this guy's always better than that guy's, no matter what, no matter what. And in the end, this bishop ended up being the, the guy who delivered the crucial checkmate, so. Well, Hugh, it kind of depends on what I get given, right? So I'm always looking to do that plan, but it's not, not always easy to achieve. Okay, let's make sure to play this so that we do not trade the queens. No queen trade for you, dude. Remember, I want to play queen here, but 
I certainly don't want the knight jumping in, so c3 first, and then queen e1. King h2, normal move, knight h4, all moves I want to get in. So everything I've done so far has been pretty by the book, I would say. Totally by the book. Alright, I'm looking to get rid of his light square bishop. And then, once we do that, usually start pushing on the other side of the board a little bit. Start to loosen up his, uh, loosen up his position. Let's start with b4. Hit this guy. The reason I'm not really going a4 is because he's also got bishop back to d6, so it doesn't even really threaten to win anything, honestly. Um, knight c4 and a4 both look like fantastic moves. b5 is kind of a uh, mini threat here. b5, bishop a3. But okay, if you play something like this, he's inadvertently stopping it. Even if he didn't mean to. Yeah, it should be a5. This is uh, just, just not enough, I think. a5 the right idea and I have a few ways to play first one which I think I'm about to do um, involves just getting the knight to d5 pretty strong but this bishop still hasn't moved so that's the first way bishop e3 knight takes and knight d5 the other way to play involves uh, basically keeping the two bishops and keeping everything and just playing super slow like rook a2 rook d2 uh, trading things slowly I like this more because it Keeps the pace a little bit. And take with the knight and get the knight there. So I'm going to get a lot of space here. It's going to open up my bishop as well. Yeah, let's uh, keep everything going. All right, look, my queen defending before there. Even if he takes, I mean, I'm coming in with the bishop, so it also looks pretty, pretty solid for me there. What do you want? Wonder, do we want to play rook there? Do we want any trades? I'm thinking queen e3 looks like a, a sweet inclusion. Let's throw this one in. The knight is lacking squares, and knight there also seem to be lacking pawns. But yeah, it seems like stuff is falling here. I think the simplest is probably to just take this. Queen to e1 guards the pawn as well. And we also have bishop d5, which is going to be a check. Check. Rook doesn't have a ton of squares. Let's bother the queen a little bit. Really, something like this is good enough, but start with this. Rook d1. He's sort of threatening to play knight d4. But I don't think he's going to be able to survive on the king side here. Like, this is pretty lethal. Yeah, I've got a pawn hanging, but queen takes uh, g6 is going to be lights out.
The king is also being forced this way. If we get a queen to the h file, queen h8 is also going to be mate. We have pressure on the king side and pressure on the queen side because we're about to make a pass bomb. It looks tough to me, that's for sure. Yeah, so queen h4 here, rook takes d5, queen h8, and then take back is decent. Queen takes g6 is just, that looks simple and good to me. And then there's even like rook takes d4 to consider, but yeah, this, this move looks simple and good. There's checkmate, so we can't just go grab that. Rook takes d5, yeah, it, it does it does allow his queen to move, but certainly it doesn't look like a good position. Is it time to Is it time to get things moving over here? I think it might be. D5. D5 might be might be even better. Queen h7. Like, the position is so good, I'm really considering playing a move that is not taking the knight. <laughs> that's how that's how strong the position looks. Queen h7 looks like uh, could potentially pose some problems as well. Takes in queen h7. Should be enough. Not queen g6 because then queen back, but yeah, this should do it. Hmm. Queen c6, eh? Look for better. Queen c6 again, but I think probably uh, you just live by the old adage, always repeat. Okay, it looks winning now. Now that I see it a second time, it looks winning. Always repeat. That's what they teach you. You have a chance to repeat in chess, you always do it. Just to get a good idea, a good feel for the position, gotta repeat. That'll let you know what, what your opponent's playing for. You know, If they repeat, they're happy to repeat, etc. This one, we actually got to see a quick d5, which we haven't seen in a while, but I think white's moves remain very similar, right? The, eventually, you got to start pushing some pawns over here, but knight c4, like I've had games that have looked almost exactly like this. And at this point, yeah, things start to devolve a little bit into more middle game stuff, but pretty much up till here, this is all standard stuff. Standard ideas for this opening. Kings and Indian attack. Highly effective overall. Bishop g4, take the knight, Playing the dark squares tends to work. Ah, so we might get this opening for the first time since the beginning of the stream, which is scary for me because at the beginning of the stream, we faced a real tough cookie. Hey, Dubly, thanks for five gifted subs. Cheers, dude. I think uh, it might be time for e5. So this is pretty much the same style as what I was saying earlier. e5, let's go queen e2. But the people that are playing these uh, these lines, like they're definitely, they're definitely heavy hitters, put it that way. Let's go knight here. This is the... Uh, Typical plan of, uh, you know, knight h2, knight g4, bishop f4. This is what I was uh, excited to talk about. Let's get the bishop out first. Yeah, so I can take, but I think I'd actually rather 
play this, and yeah, if you want to take me, you can, but I'm going to threaten your pawn here. Um... I think here, I think we'll go uh, c3. Take that. Can always bring the rook to d1. We've got pressure on this pawn. He's barely defending it. Knights and bishops. Very solid, solid game so far. H5 is not usually the move you want to play. Let's go check. Well, these are these are quick wins. Uh, <laughs> it's not my fault, dude. They're blundering, they're blundering checkmate one. They're blundering their queen, man. What am I supposed to do? I can't help it. So this is a setup here, and it, black can set it up any way it wants. But you get you'll get it against the French and against people who play the Khan or the Taimanov. And they won't always play this. They'll sometimes play knight f6, bishop e7. But the point for white is that you push forward with e5. You support it with your queen, knight, and rook. And they usually can't attack it more than three times. And then you play h4. You reroute your knight to the g4 square. Play bishop f4. Everybody supports the e-pawn. And then you either play h5 or some sack against the king. And it's a really easy way to play for white. You can just uh, crank those moves out pretty effortlessly. Don't really have to think about what black is doing. And once you get bishop f4, it's like, yeah, they can never go f6. You're always threatening to hit the queen. You're going to play queen d2 and hit that pawn. Knight g4 to do the same. And you're all over these uh, dark squares on the king's side. And then once you do that all successfully, then they will hang their queen every time. Every single time. Ooh, the games are getting uh, tougher. We're at 1569 right now. Thanks, JNooms96, 37, 19 months, uh, Nezikos earlier, the brand new sub of the channel, and Invisible Andy80, gifting a sub. Thank you, thank you. H4. Okay, what's the idea with H4? Please enlighten me. Okay, so he's playing H4. He's giving me dark square bishop. I'm waiting for the, yeah, what's the punchline? What's the punchline? Okay. Okay, and now you're trading the queens. So now you don't have any attack and you're removing your castling rights. And now white is better. Is that, is that what I'm supposed to believe? That white has an advantage now, after all that? <laughs> this seems highly unlikely. Guys, I'll just leave it at that. Highly unlikely. Okay. So now we're handing over free tempo to me. Okay, okay, I'm just keeping track here. So this move right now definitely wins me the e5 pawn. Even bishop g4 looks like a like a decent move. Right, because bishop g4 pins the knight, once again threatens to take it. Check is good, everyone knows that. I think I'm gonna go here because I'm hoping that we bait him into playing this move and we get to take that pawn. So we don't get to do that, but what we do get to do is win a free pawn here. Yeah, always check it might be made. That's what they say, right? I think he's uh, taking it to heart. So 
we won a pawn, we're just gonna bring the bishop back. Make d7, castle some way. Alex, thanks for 52 months. Alex, 14. Let's bring this here. Still want to bring that bishop back. Bishop f5 at some point will be a, a decent move as well. I'll probably do it right now. Grilled peppers, if that's the, uh, I think if that's the threshold, then nobody's doing well. Low to grilled peppers. Okay, this looks good just for trading purposes, but it's hard for me to give away that bishop after I talked it up, talked such a big game about it. Okay, what's going on here? Such nice bishops, why thank you? I think we go here, knight f8, question mark. No, here, knight c5. Yeah, it's funny, Prim, only the plebs got that one. The subs kind of struck out. So that's a threat. We're also stopping 86, so we can take this next turn. Knight d3 looks uh, very effective though. Those squares get checked and that square gets forked. So I think he kind of has to take me, but if he takes me, his knight is still trapped here. Tough for buddy at this point. Eight D three thing is uh, a little strong to me. Definitely a strong fifteen hundred. Absolutely, I've had to find some uh, tactics, no doubt here. GG. White did almost trick us. That the game was not easy for sure. I mean, I I think that I just didn't want to give up the bishop and go into the tactics. What would I recommend for everyone to do? Just bishop takes knight and black is very easily winning. Because you're just up a pawn. Very solid structure. But I think this move is fine. It just gets tactical and you have to be ready to show up and play the tactics with them. But it, it's the more effective move. Bishop h7. Okay. Oh, we know what's coming. We know it. Yeah, buddy. There it is. Give me that bishop. Play c3, which is usually the move you want to do after this. And hey, if I see the guy castling that way, you're going to get me excited here with b4, right? I got to get the pawns going myself. How am I going to say no to that? Push him baby, why not? Queen a4, b5. Oh, where's your knight going there, brah? You just took the last available square for that knight. Your own pieces are to blame here. Okay, this looks like I will immediately shut that down with uh, the pawn there. The only reason I you know, could consider not doing that is because here I'm really gonna have some checkmate ideas. So that this doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Well, all I'm seeing is potential mates. 
queen comes to c8, so it's not force mate, but it's pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. I wish I could, you know, take here or something to distract the queen, but it's just not possible. And this one, you are gonna get mated, bruh. You can't be doing this. Meeting one, look for better. Hopefully, he doesn't play king a8. <laughs> then I can't look for better. Oh, he just resigns, that's good. Guys, I, was, I wasn't gonna check meet him. I was gonna look for better. You would never know, because the game didn't, didn't end that way, but you just gotta trust me. This is just a, uh, honestly, pretty smooth game. And I think I've even had a position that looked exactly like this before in this speed run. You get that bishop, immediately go for the c3 move. It helps your queen get out. It helps support b4. It keeps the knight out of d4 and b4. Like, c3 is a great move to be playing. c3 really brings it all together after you get the light squared bishop as well. All right, f4 is played. We get our fianchetto here, no problem. Whoa! All right, he's coming straight for us. <laughs> well, this one's gonna be tougher. 1600s in the house, yeah. Whoa, what the hell is that? I'm gonna attack some dark squares here. Knight h5, this should be uh, you know, typical wheelhouse stuff. Knight takes here, everything's looking like a snack right now. Yeah, the dark squares just fall apart, don't they? E5 here. C5 also looks like a pretty solid move. I would say both of them are Totally acceptable. I'm probably gonna go c5 here because I'm really expecting this. And then I believe following up with b5 is a, it's a very aggressive high energy way to play. You know, we're gonna get queen a5, we're gonna get rook b8, and this bishop from g7 is still gonna coordinate on the b2 square. So this just looks strong. This is the move I wanted to see. Eh, eh, eh. There's, <laughs> there's a B2 pawn in the future, boy. It's a lurk in there. All right, so Queen A5 looks like a, a move here. I mean, I think he just has to play C4 next, but Rook B8 looks just plain and simple. Easy move. A shirts. We're trying to get a quick uh, KO here. Yep, exactly. Using our King's Indian Bishop, coordinating there. If C4, we just have A6, get the boys in there. I don't see a good way to get, <laughs> I don't see a good way to not lose a lot here. Queen E2 is also Knight G3. Queen a5 is also a strong idea, but I didn't want to start there because then he would play bishop c4, cover it, and then if I played rook b8, he could deal with this threat with c3 maybe, so. Not quite good enough. Yeah, and this one, speaking of not quite good enough. I think we can just hurt him here with bishop takes because if the king tries to run, then he's gonna be handing me that bishop. And with the uh, bishop d4 looking for trades, aka looking for knight f4.
Let's just keep bringing the uh, the homies in. Okay, e5 not only gets the queen off this diagonal, but might get it off the b2 square as well. And it does. Jack. Jack. Jack me. Yay. Effortless, yes. Oh, miss queen b or miss the queen with rook b two. So we have some uh, thirsty individuals here, huh? So in this position, you guys wanted to play rook b two, right? A lot of you. So this is I'm just want we're making sure to get all the bands lined up. So Benji pub G. Um, Heavenly, uh, Suti, boom, boom, yep, yeah, you, um, that's a lot of people, Noise Dota, yep, that's a lot of bands we got, uh, going on there, a lot, that's a lot, and those are just the guys who, uh, started the riots, who incited the discussion, RDN as a subscriber, Another uh, guy uh, about to uh, get axed. So Rook B2 from the chat. Uh, a strong, sturdy move, which uh, loses the game on the spot and ensures that uh, Black doesn't have any other threats. Rook to B2. But it was there was some conviction in the chat as well. Some real serious conviction. Oh, yeah. Outrageous. I miss Rook B2. <laughs> We're playing possibly the highest rated player we've played so far. We played a few 1600s, but. Here we go. So we're playing a guy who's basically setting up the old hippo. But I'm not going to let it phase me. I'm just going to set up my exact opening the way I usually do. Whoa! Just hang on a sec there, bro Hemoth. That does not look right. At all. Now, why isn't that correct? Why? I'm assuming you guys see what I see. You guys see the guys? You see, the, see the win? It'd be great if you guys could uh, just let me know the win. Back seating, right? Type it out. Let's see the. Let's. Uh, why don't you type out your moves, guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you uh, participate in the stream? Why don't you uh, type out your moves, guys? Yeah, yeah, no, just type them out. Here in public. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of people are uh, sc scared to make some suggestions now. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, that's fine. That's fine. We'll still find a way to make it work. Now, what we're going to go for here is something that. I would call suspicious, but it will work. The best kind of moves. Suspicious, but it'll work. It's suspicious, but it'll work. It'll, it'll just, it'll just work. It's a suspicious one, but don't worry, it'll work. It hasn't worked yet, right? Don't get too hyped because remember, we lost the piece to get this as well. So 
We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> we haven't done anything good yet. Thinking maybe uh, the b3, bishop a3 kind of ideas, but that uh, gives, uh, gives our opponents some good chances as well. Maybe it's time to just move this knight, you know, something like knight here, knight c4. If b3, bishop a3, I don't think we're, uh, we're not really prosecuting the advantage that well. Take knight, f takes e5. Yeah, but the knight just takes back. Doesn't seem that good. Bishop takes looks a little suspicious. I'm going to take with the pawn. You know, take control of a few squares there. <laughs> that move is looking great now, but it's, it's hard to get. It's hard to get. I think I'm going to play d4. Really take uh, the sting out of that. Oh! Luis F. Oliveira and Adrian28. Let's remember those names, guys. They said in this position, I was threatening. Bishop takes d7. King takes d7. Queen takes g6. Oh my god. Queen takes g6. 95. Losing the game on the spot. Make sure we remember those guys. Unbelievable suggestion by two... Upstanding chess bra citizens. Oh, this guy, he's setting something up, hey? You gotta be careful. When you see your opponent play moves like that, you just know they're up to something frisky. Actually, you can't even move the knight. Let's go rook here. I'm gonna just, just add just a little bit of pressure there. Bishop back to b3, rook e1, looks like the uh, prescription here. Yeah, bishop b3 is nice. It's it's a nice bishop, but it's, it's not doing enough, I would say, on that diagonal. Okay. I think it's time for this. It's almost the queen takes f5 idea. My queen looks uncomfortable. Well, I mean, it, it can't move, but at the same time, it's tying down like five of black's pieces, so I think it's kind of doing well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can see, you can see what's happening here. My one queen is tying down pretty much everything in the position for my opponent, which is overall a good thing. I'm looking at uh, you know, queen takes f5, uh, some fun moves there. I don't think they work, but they look exciting. I think we got to take. I really could go here, though. Am I that kind of person? Like, am I this type of individual. I think this says a lot about me. Grabbing a pawn in a position like this. Ugh. This reflects on me, probably poorly. Bishop there, I think it's time for a check. Oh, he takes. Okay. Let's take with a rook. I, again, I could take here, but his knight's gonna reach that square. I don't know if I'm thrilled about that. Let's take like this. Because I think what's about to happen is, you know, d5, 
Bishop's gonna get there, Pawn's gonna take... We got some uh, ideas. We have a few tricks up our sleeve. Do we start with a check or do we take? Let's go here first. Let's let him take. Let's let him take and let's push and push. I want my pawn on h5. So my bishops can start to say hello. I need this guy gone. He's a very annoying piece. Mm. Mm. I need to mate him on f7 here. It's the only way. I'm not going to have any chance to do it unless it's checkmate on f7. Check. Careful. It's not supposed to be that careful. Dude. Okay, luckily he didn't play a good move. He played just an average move. Let's go here. And I think I'll take that way. Oh, no, no, no. You can't give me a pawn. Now I'm going to start to think I have winning chances. Now I'm going to start to think I have winning chances. You don't want to give me that hope. Speed only, dude. I have speed only, that's all I've got. You don't want to test the speed only. You don't want to test the account's name speed only. Don't test me like that. I didn't ask to be tested. Like He came at me. Hey, I was ready to just win the game uh, nice and chill, collected. He started coming at me playing damn good moves. Yeah, my account's getting reported after that game. That's for damn sure. I am getting reported 100%. I, he must be. Like, there's no way this is normal. Can you guys imagine? You just have a position like this, totally normal. And with eight and a half seconds here, your opponent just uncorks, you know, just everything on you. <laughs> like, there should be no way. But I think it's fair to say that everyone would have the same reaction. Just full molding, absolute tilt. Even just watching it, I know you guys are upset. Just watching it. Like, there must be some 1600s in chat that are looking at this game and just getting tilted on his behalf. I understand. 1600s have to band together. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you can do so right here. And don't forget to click that bell and turn the post notifications on. And if you're looking for more of the King's Indian speedrun, you can check it out right here. Thanks for watching.